This is Marketplace from American Public Media. I'm Kai Rizdahl. Venture capitalists aren't venturing quite as much as they used to. Investment in biotech, for just one example, is down by roughly half since the beginning of last year. One sector is holding its own, though. It's even up a little bit. Healthcare information technology, all the software and management systems that keep doctors' offices and hospitals humming along. From the Marketplace Entrepreneurship Desk at Oregon Public Broadcasting, Mitchell Hartman reports. Until recently, when venture capitalists put money into medicine, they went after the hot stuff, cutting-edge drugs and heroic surgeries using space-age medical devices. Funding those things used to be a no-brainer because people wanted to live for an extra six months or an extra year. Dr. Seth Rudnick heads up healthcare investment at Canaan Partners, a Silicon Valley venture capital firm. In the past decade, biotech and medical device companies routinely sucked up one to two billion every quarter. After all, drugs to fight cancer and pacemakers to keep hearts beating are expensive to develop and deploy. Suddenly, maybe that's not going to be cost efficient, so you may shift your funding to those things that change how long people live healthy lives. We all of a sudden have to focus on the the routine care of chronic conditions early rather than the the life-saving, really glamorous, glitzy treatment of acute conditions after they've progressed. Scott Wallace is a fellow at the University of Virginia's Darden School of Business. He used to head the National Alliance for Health Information Technology. He says investment dollars are following the government's new reform agenda to control costs by promoting the most efficient, cost-effective treatments, which in turn hangs on putting more patient data online than using it to coordinate care, including $19 billion in the Obama stimulus package to encourage doctors to get up to speed using electronic medical records. Healthcare IT is a good place to be right now from a fundraising point of view. That's Louis Machuca, CEO of medical software company Cryptic in Portland. So that point of efficiency, although it's very pedestrian and perhaps not as glamorous as the next new breakthrough dog, really is what stands between us and a better healthcare system. Cryptic has been growing 20 to 40 percent a year. Machuca says his phone's been ringing off the hook since the president announced his digital medicine incentive plan. It doesn't hurt that doctors and hospitals face penalties if they don't take the bait. DrChrono.com is another company moving into this space. The two-person New York startup offers web-based appointment scheduling for small doctor's offices. It launched in January, and co-founder Daniel Kivitanos says they'll introduce their latest software package in June. One of our future goals is to have a billing system that electronic medical record systems can just kind of connect into us and use us as a billing component. Rocket science, maybe it's not, but that's really not the name of the game anymore. Used to be the hottest medical startups were chasing hit-or-miss miracle drugs and treatments. Nowadays, they're more likely to be like Cryptic and Dr. Chrono, painstakingly tying up the electronic loose ends of our tangled healthcare system saving a little money and perhaps a few lives in the process. I'm Mitchell Hartman for Marketplace.